All right, after White House turmoil sparked a market sell-off, what should you do next? Here now is Lisa Kopp, head of traditional investments at U.S. Bank Wealth Management. So, Lisa, it was a decisive move lower, but we're still up, what, 5% in the S&P 500 so far this year. So would you call this sell-off as a, as a good buying opportunity for people? Well, we certainly are counseling our clients to focus on their long-term objectives. So, yes, in that context, we certainly would... Uh, advise this them to not necessarily just panic, but to use this as an opportunity again to refresh their portfolio if, re if rebalancing is appropriate at this point. Well, still, we don't know how much turmoil is left, right? I mean, we have analysts during around the impeachment word, which is always worrisome. So how do you find the opportunities amid this slight downturn? Right, absolutely. So longer term, there is uncertainty about how serious this will get and what the impact could be. However, in the nearer term, what we see is that the underlying fundamentals of the economy still really make sense. So both if you look on a macro basis at some of the indicators that continue to come out, if you look on a bottom-up corporate earnings basis, those numbers continue to look good. And so I think really the question becomes, if this does turn um, more significant, how much of a dent could it have? I, our analysis so far would indicate that what you're primarily taking off is the upside case of being able to have additional boost in taxes uh, being cut and regulations being cut and in infrastructure spending going up. So if that's the case and the fundamentals of the economy are still good, again, we would go ahead and advise uh, our investors to stay in it and to focus again on their long-term objectives. But then again, it is important to still monitor the developments in case worse surprises come out of the gate. So within the markets, though, I mean, what sectors and equities do you like? Because now people have an opportunity to buy stocks at somewhat of a, of a discount, although we are still up for the year, as I said earlier. Yeah, well, two of our favorite sectors actually are technology and consumer discretionary. And I would say that their attractiveness is even heightened in this environment. Our base case on technology and consumer discretionary really fo uh, comes from two different areas. So one is that on a top-down basis, you've got some really nice secular trends bolstering these. And those are things like rising global middle class incomes, the shift to e-commerce, mm. kinds of disruptive activity that allows some innovative opportunities for companies that are positioned well. Stuff that's not related to DC. Absolutely. And so you just actually hit on why, in some ways, this turmoil heightens mm. their attractiveness because not only do they have these top-down trends, but these top-down trends are independent of what may be going on in Washington. And the other thing is, if investors are nervous, that really allows the opportunity for people to refocus on the best growth stories that they can. And so even a third reason to be interested. And is one of those growth stories actually in Europe? Because when you look at political instability here in the U.S., and we have populism that has finally subsided in Europe, maybe Europe is a better opportunity. Yeah, actually, we just in the last few months did go to an overweight position on Europe for exactly that reason. What we do see is a cyclical upturn in earnings there. We see some nice macro numbers continuing to come out of the uh, both continental Europe and the UK, despite some of the Brexit fears. And in addition to that, you've had some of the political risks taken off the table with the recent election results. All right, Lisa Kopp, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.